Hello everybody. Today we're going to work on the uh, bar oil pump for the Cord King M1820 firewood processor. As I'm sure I've told you in past videos, the bar oil pump that came with the machine is a little bit sketchy. It's a diaphragm pump. It's not very good. It's unreliable. Um, I have no end of issues with the thing. Uh, the pump that's on here now is probably the third pump that I've put on here, the other two having gone bad. So what I want to do is uh, replace the bar oil pump with something more reliable. This is a new gear pump. We've got some hose fittings. Uh, the hose fittings that came with it are the wrong size. We have some new quarter inch hose. Some ho they included some hose clamps in here. That's good. This pump, uh, it says it's a fuel pump. It's got a f open flow of 3.7 gallons per minute. It runs on 12 volts and it uses 5 amps. Now this is a gear pump. And what I'm going to do is pull the cover off so you can see what a gear pump is and why. And I'll explain why I want to use it. A gear pump, which is also known as a positive displacement pump, does not rely on rubber veins or any type of a diaphragm. Okay, so we're going to pop the cover off and have a look. Okay. Now, obviously, these are the gears. All right, so the flow goes in this way so your liquid comes into your gears and as the gears rotate in opposite directions it then pushes the fluid out this side of the pump if anything goes wrong with this you can pull these gears out of here and clean them up or you know if, if a chunk of dirt gets in there or something you can easily fix it the nature of this pump is that it's always going to operate. It's not going to stop unless something were to jam the gears. The biggest downside to this is this o-ring right here. Well, it's kind of a funky looking o-ring. I don't know. Maybe we can just do a standard o-ring. I'm not sure. I guess if I was smart, I would pull this o-ring out of here and uh, measure it and get some spares anyway that's how a gear pump looks how it operates it's also uh, brass or probably i think it's bronze so these gears are pretty tough okay so let's put this back together we want to make sure we uh follow the arrow here because that's important to know which is which is in and which is out so before I get too carried away installing this on the firewood processor, I'm going to hook this up to a battery and make sure that it spins. So I have my little battery power supply over here. And the reason I'm not using a power supply <clears throat> is because my power supply doesn't go to 5 amps. It only goes to 2.5 amps. So I can't run it with my benchtop power supply. All right, so I'm just going to put I'm just going to connect this to the uh, battery. And there it is. So that's all I wanted to see. I wanted to make sure that it ran. So we're good. We can now proceed with installation. This is the old bar oil pump. Just a real light duty fuel pump. I now have this gear pump, which is significantly larger, and we have to fit this pump somewhere in this space here. So my, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a plate to fit you right in here, right underneath where this one is. So I'm gonna make a plate that just kinda bolts in and drops down. It can be lower, this pump is gonna push the bar oil no matter where it's positioned at 
what I'm going to do now is take some measurements. And what I want to do is I'm going to use the bolt holes for the old pump. And I'm just going to mount a plate to this piece of frame. And I'm going to bring it down here. And then, uh, because it has to sit below this angled piece of the frame here. So it's got to sit down here a little bit farther because of its size. So I'm going to get my tape measure and start doing some measurements. I'm going to do that off camera and see where we wind up. I found a piece of 5 16 thick steel plate, which will be perfect for my needs. That will support the, the heavier uh, oil pump. So what I need to do now is I need to uh, clean this up a little bit. And I'm just, this oddball piece here, I'm just going to cut right here. I need a piece uh, four, four inches by nine inches. So I need to clean all this, the rust and stuff off of there before I can cut on it. Now, this sucker is going to be hot. All right, here we go. All right, now that I've got the plate cut out, I'm going to clean up all the all the slag and stuff and get it ready for drilling. So we're going to zip through this real quick. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a transfer punch to mark these holes and a transfer punch is simply a punch where it's a straight punch of a certain diameter and it's just got a little point on it right there. So we're going to put that in each hole and then just carefully make a little mark. We're not making a full center punch mark. We're just giving it a, this is just like a reference mark. Now I know where to drill the holes for this for the pump. Now I'll take a real center punch and I'll hit all these with a little bit deeper of a, a mark. Okay. Okay, now I can drill these holes, and then we'll find some hardware to mount the pump. The holes in the, in the grommets on the pump are approximately uh, 1364 ths So I'm going to use a number 10, uh, number 1032 screw. It's an inch long, so that's enough, long enough to pass through the grommet and the plate. So I'm going to drill a 1364 hole, which is just a little bit bigger than this, and that'll give me a little bit of wiggle room if I get one of the holes slightly off. So I'm going to wiggle the holes. So what you see here is the wiggler, and what that is is just a point, and I'm going to, I'm going to get it to stop moving right there. Okay, now that's exactly where... 
point of the drill bit is going to be. So I'm going to bring this down and I'm going to make sure that it's right in the center of my, my mark. too fast for my liking. A little cutting oil. Okay. And we'll switch back to the wiggler and do the next hole. Okay, so I took some I took some uh, stainless steel number 1032s, passed them through the grommets, and they fit just right. The only thing I want to do is add a uh, lock washer on the back side here, and it doesn't have to be you know super duper tight. The grommets are for shock absorption. So now the next thing I have to do is take this up to the processor, remove the old pump, and then mark the holes in this plate that I have to drill. So first things first, I gotta go get that old pump off. This is really messy. I'm trying to clean up just so I don't get this all this dirt all over myself. Once it's once this pump would sit for uh overnight or yeah pretty much a few hours or overnight it would lose its prime this is the filter and the uh, we're gonna call it the control the flow control valve so it's just a like a petcock valve it's wiping all the oily smuck off my hands Here's the old pump. Okay, now what I need to do is uh, go get the new pump and plate and get it lined up here. And I think what I'll do is I, I think I'll clamp it in place and then I'll use my transfer punches to mark the holes. I think that'll be the smartest thing to do and that way they're exactly in the right spot. Um, this pump is... Uh, fairly heavy and I kind of need to have it mounted in order to do this properly. Ugh, okay. Yeah, because you're going to sit there. Now hopefully I can mark these without having anything move. Okay, I've got some good marks. That's all I needed. Mark there, mark there. All right, I've got the holes drilled. Now I'm gonna put this in place temporarily. Just to make sure everything looks good and lines up. Okay, yeah, we better check this one too. All right, good. Yep, 
It looks like I'll have plenty of room underneath for my control valve, because you're gonna go here like this. Control valve will fit here. Probably put it like this. And then the discharge hose will go from here up to the saw. Then all I gotta do is wire it and then I'll be done. But first I gotta paint this. So I gotta take it all apart again, paint it, put it back together. Two hours later. Okay, we've got the bracket painted. We've got the pump mounted to the bracket. And now we're going to uh, set this in here. Get it mounted. I had to pull that adapter out of the old pump and that was not nearly as easy as you would think. That pump was molded and I had to chop it apart just to get the, to the threads. I put a quick connector on here so I can take this apart if I need to. I'm just going to wrap this in some electrical tape to protect it from the weather. This is Scotch Super 88. It is heavy. This is the heavy duty electrical tape. It tolerates a greater range of temperatures. And I do believe it's UV resistant, although it doesn't say that. I had ground off the paint so that I could make a good ground connection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, a fresh connector on this on the ground wire and just pull this one bolt out and connect it there. That'll be the best way to do it, I think. I just crimped an, a non-insulated connector onto that. And now I'm just gonna put this on there. Can't see what I'm doing, but I can't see what I'm doing either. So there. Now I'll tighten this. And then we get to test it, which I'm really excited for. Hopefully it works exactly the way I intended. And I think you can see I've got a lot of sun glare here, so it's hard to see. Anyway, there's uh, the oil is already up to here, and that's because it's kind of pushing its way through the from the tank up through. Now I'm going to turn this on. Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> yes, that's really cranking it out. So we're gonna have to close this a lot. This little valve that I have for adjustment, it's gonna be a little bit touchy to get it just right. So right now, it's pumping a little too much. I don't want it to pump too much because then you're just wasting oil. is I might have to restrict this a little bit more. I'm not sure yet, we'll see how it goes. But that thing really puts out the oil. There is a specification that tells you how much oil to put onto the bar. I have a feeling that this is way, way more than we need. So let's see, I'm gonna start this thing up. Okay, well, it works. That's cranking out a lot of oil. So, oh yeah, it's got it all over the camera too. Okay, so I will be uh, fiddling with the adjustment here to get that just right. I'm not quite sure 
what the right way is to do to deal with that. But one thing's for sure, the blade is going to be well lubricated now. All right, that's it for the bar oil pump replacement. If you have any comments, suggestions, I would love to hear it. If you found this useful, please let me know. Uh, feel free to uh, hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. Thanks very much and have a great day.